name is Kimba Luke, and welcome back to my channel. And today, as you can see, I have a bunch of freaking computer parts in front of me. That's right. We are going to build our own PC today. That's right. I mean, I, my PC is pretty good, but it's uh, one you just buy. It's an HP uh, 520-something, 26, I, I can't remember. By the way, it's a good PC. It's just... I, don't, I need something that I wanted. I wanted to always build a PC, and so well, I'm going to do it. Yes, I've never done it before, so this will be my first time. But I have done my homework and studied and studied and studied, and that's exactly what you need to do if this is your first time building a PC. PC. So, um, I will leave a list and links to all the products that I got down below, but we're going to go through them real quick, because uh, this is pretty much everything you're going to need. Um... Let's start off with case. This is a deep cool Tesseract case I got for, I don't know, about 35, 36 bucks on Amazon. This is a deep cool CPU processor. Um, you know, about 20 some bucks here. And then the processor that I chose, I chose to go AMD because for one, it's cheaper. And two, I mainly use my computer for internet web surfing and the majority, that's the majority of it, and uh, video editing. And when it comes to AMD, um, Intel falls short a little bit on the market as far as video editing. And this is why I chose that. I know some of you guys are going to probably make a case for Intel and stuff. You know what? I don't want to hear it. don't really care. I've done my research, and that's what I came across. So, Plus, it's an 8-core processor. This is the AMD FX8320E. I chose the E because it... It scales back on the power just a little bit, so it's not as it's slightly less powerful than the 8320, but it also saves power and helps keep cool, so um, that's not a big deal to me. Um, so there's the processor that I chose, the motherboard right here, a Gigabyte uh, 970A D3P, and this is the uh, socket that you need for this processor, so... Whenever you're building a computer, for those of you who don't know, make sure the motherboard you choose works with your processor. Otherwise, guess what? You just wasted some money, a lot of money. So, and this was about uh, 75, 80 bucks, and um, and it suits all my needs. And of course, you know this is a mid-size tower case, um, so I went with a bigger board because you know why not. And then I bought a Glacier modular power supply. This is a 500 watt power supply. Now for the hard drive, I've I've had this Western Digital that I took out of an old PC. And I've had it for a while now. Uh, it's a mechanical HDD one terabyte. So you know I didn't pay enough for that. It's just something I harvested from an old computer. But I do I, bleh, I did buy a 120 gigabyte SSD, which for those of you who don't know is a non-mechanical hard drive, which speeds up everything faster, load times and everything. And this is what um, my OS is going to go on and a handful of other programs. Otherwise, everything else is going to get saved with this. And then I bought a handful of extra set of cables. Normally, everything comes with everything you need, but it was only like five bucks off of eBay, so I went ahead and bought six gigabyte uh, Ethernet cables. And then, of course, for the RAM, I bought some Kingston HyperX um, 16 gigabyte 18, yeah, 1,866 megahertz uh, RAM, and this gigabyte, or this gigabyte motherboard does have four RAM slots, but I just chose to go with the two. I'll always add another uh, 16 later, because it's a maximum of 32 gigabytes. And then, of course, I bought a light-on DVD kit. If you buy the kit, it comes with everything you need, and installation software. But, um... That DVD burning. I know they're about to become obsolete with the digital age, but still never hurts to have one because some things like this and uh, some other things, OS's, like my OS here. Um, I bought this off of eBay. This is Windows 10 Professional. Um, bought it for half the price of a regular Windows 10. Only paid like 50 bucks for that. And let's see, anything else I missed? Oh, yes, I bought another case fan. This does have two case fans, but I went ahead and bought a third one because you want to keep your stuff cool. And eventually I'll probably end up buying a water cooler for this. But 
Uh, right now, I'm just going to go with the extra case. So that is all the basic parts you're going to need. Um, like I said, I will leave links in the description to everything that I bought. And, and as far as a work surface, I'm going to be working on my coffee table here. Try to work on a non-carpeted area, but I, everywhere I have is carpet. So what you're going to want to do is plug in your power supply to the wall, but don't hook it up to anything. Just plug it in and leave it to the side and continuously touch it every now and then to help ground yourself so no static electricity shocks this or that or that or that or that because if it shock if you shock it man it's gonna be wasted and you ain't gonna be able to use it and then I'm gonna set up my area and I'll show you here in a minute and two more things you're gonna need screwdriver Phillips head the only tool you're really gonna need you might need a pair of needle nose pliers sometimes to help um, get connections connectors off and stuff but and then this last thing you're gonna need something to drink. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. You're gonna get thirsty. It's like right now. All right, I will see you guys in a minute when I clear this off, and we can start with step one. I'm gonna break this down into multiple videos. That way, it, it's a little easier, and it's not one big long hour and a half long video. So, all right, see you in a minute. Okay, everybody, step one is we're going to set up the motherboard. As you can see, I've prepared my surface. i got a towel down, and it's a towel that has the least fuzz I could find on it, you know, and it's not fuzzy, it's my beach towel. So this spot is mine, as you can see, on the beach towel. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to install the CPU first, then the heat sink, and then the RAM. So, so heat sink, or CPU, C, uh, heat sink, and then the RAM or sorry RAM and this is dual channel RAM so you want to make sure you put the RAM in the correct slots so they're color coded so it's no big deal okay so first thing we want to do is the CPU now the AMD CPU now some of the some CPUs are just built like this squared you know some are actually like the Intel uh, Skylake ones they actually got a specific shape that will only fit in one way but the best way to tell is that there's a little arrow right there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. A little gold arrow right there on the corner. And there's a little arrow right here on this corner. You want to match those up. Because it can only be installed one way. And you don't want to screw up your motherboard or your CPU. You know what I mean? So there's your arrow. There's my arrow. It's going to fit down just like that. Now, when you pull this out of the package, do not touch any of these gold pins okay so just all you have to do keep a hold of it on the side like that all right so first we're gonna get this little lever up you press down and you press to the left and you lift up like that just like that now this one doesn't have a specific casing so pull out the AMD FX processor See? By sides, arrow, arrow. Okay, pretty simple, huh? Now you just set that down. Now it's it'll plop in just like that. You just jig it a little bit, but it'll plop right down to the pins. You know, there's no need to press on it or anything. All you gotta do is press this back down, and it's gonna be a little tough. You might hear some noise, but it's okay. Bam! Guess what? Processor's installed. Okay. Look how easy that was. I see not coming out it's installed I always give it a nice little jiggle just in case well, I always give it this is my first time fucking doing it uh, it's in here lying to you guys already wanna remember this is my first time doing this now the heat sink now all new heat sinks are gonna come with thermal paste it's already gonna be applied see all those little rectangular things and whatnot uh, so and this one specifically is for uh, AMD socket boards and Intel it can work on either it's specific though to which ones and if you're going to use Intel it's going to come with this but since we have an AMD we don't need it and it's got these cool little lockdown things so oops, let me take that off here all right now this thing's just going to heat sink right across it 
and it's going to connect to these two things. So, all right. Let me just double check here. Like I said, it's my first time. I might have to edit some of this out for you guys. Alright, so this is going to sit down right on top. You got these little things here. What is it? Not. Alright, give me a second, guys. I'll be right back because i got to figure this out. Okay, I got the CPU cooler installed. Now, you had to clip one, side, one of these clips in first. And then press down, and it's got these little flange, flanges on the side, and it bends down with it. So make sure it's nice and connected. So now we install the fans. Three pin fan. System fan. Now these are three pins. Those are four pins. Does it matter? <laughs> Okay. It's got two wires, but only one CPU fan thing. Hmm. And these are three wire connections, and those are four. Interesting. Okay, so I had to nix the uh, C the uh, CPU cooler fan that I bought because it had two three-pin wires and shit. No, see, it has two three uh, three-pin wires and it came with this connector. Well, here it's a four-pin connector for the CPU fan, and that's a three-pin. So that's to make two and a one, but that still doesn't do me any good. Because if I try to fit that on there, then maybe it'll work. Hmm. I don't know. Either way, I don't know if that's going to work or not. So I'm just going to use this one. It has a four pin. It came with it. So it better be safe than sorry, guys. So, and this one, you know, it's got the heat sink paste right there, or the thermal paste right there. So it's no big deal. So let's go ahead and just install this one for now. And I'll research it, and if it finds out, if I find out that that would work, then I might reinstall it and get some new thermal paste and do a separate video. But right now, I'm just going to be saving, sorry, because this is my first time building a PC. So if any of you guys out there can tell me if it's okay to take a three-pin connector and stick it on that four-pin connector CPU fan on the motherboard, please tell me. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, that one's on. There we go. Now we got to get this one on. Somehow, come on. No, you want to. Sorry about that, guys. My camera died. So, uh, next time uh, you do a YouTube video, make sure your camera's got plenty of juice. Alright, anyhow. So, here I am, still trying to install this uh, heat sink. There we go. Now, there, it's on. Now, we got that installed, now we'll just take this, and we're just going to put it right there on the CPU fan. Now, all these little connectors are labeled on your motherboard, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem. And if you by chance do, um, you know, just check your manual for your, on your motherboard. I we'll want to clean up wires later. All right, so the CPU is installed, heat sinks installed. Now we're gonna do the RAM. RAM's the easy part. That one I can't fuck up. Oop. Got some stuff there. Now, as you can see here on the RAM. 
it's got a break in it right here in that little notch so you want to match up on your ram let me flip this around so you guys can see about that that kind of helps all right now on your ram dual channel gray gray black black you want the shorter end of the brake on the shorter end here and they got the little notches and then push your little levers back now you're just going to press firmly down and it's going to seat itself and you should hear a little click right and those levers should just automatically lock into place for you bam just like that getting some important stuff knocked out of the way here guys make sure to double check I want to fuck up my RAM with a hundred bucks bam locked in place okay so we installed the CPU we installed the heatsink now nah, too bad I had to use the factory heatsink like I said if any of you guys can tell me if I can put a three pin connector on a four pin please tell me that'd be great otherwise I'll have to research it and then I installed the RAM next we're going to install this little plate here that came with the motherboard into the back of the case of the computer because you're going to want to do this before you install your motherboard and this is the IO plate it has all your label connections for all these things here so let's get to that shall we okay so to take off the case there's going to be screws here screws here screws here and screw here I can take off both sides of the panels once I access the all the main parts and then the other side is going to be the access to the back side of the motherboard so let's go ahead and unscrew these real quick yes I'm going to do this all on camera for you just the way you guys can see you guys not, might not be able to see these two bottom screws here but they're down here and they unhand tighten some of you guys might have screws that you need a screwdriver for but four screws no big deal. Pull off plates. They pull straight off. Bam. Like that. Okay. All right. Now we got access to this. This is where that stuff is going on. Um, and this is where that plate's got to go. It's got to go from the inside out. And then, of course, make sure that the correct handwriting that you can read is facing this way and this is just gonna snap right in hopefully and I say hopefully because that's what it's supposed to do maybe you wanna fight me do you? should snap right into place Test it, make sure. I don't see. Huh. Why do you want to fight me? Here we go. There it is. Alright, now, yeah. Alright. So, there's that. That is done. Okay. So, the next video, I'm going to end it here, is we're going to install the motherboard into the case. So, Thank you for joining me, and as always, show me some love, show me some hate, but show me something. Either way, I'll see you on the flip side. Peace out, and have a game of people. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button. It helps me get my channel out there. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Part 2.